Leith Gafur from Lucentum Sports and Entertainment Law joins us now live to discuss this tragic scandal and Pistorius fall from grace. Thank you for being here and joining us, Leith. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Anna. Let's start first with the charge, premeditated murder in connection with the shooting death of Reva Steenkamp. Is this the same as our first degree? And wouldn't that mean there's enough evidence to suggest he did this on purpose? Well, it's a good question, Anna. Uh, in our system here, in our judicial system, oftentimes uh, first degree murder is the more serious type of form of uh, a capital charge. And oftentimes, uh, one of the, the difference between that offense and others is the Crown is required to prove an intent. And so oftentimes you see in situations like this um, where the Crown Attorney's Office will, will charge with that offense knowing that they can go down to a second degree or a manslaughter charge, uh, whereas moving up is much more difficult. So I wouldn't read much, uh, if we're looking at it from the Canadian perspective, into the, the differentiating of the charge between um, a second degree or first degree charge. A in many cases, it's a, uh, a strategy that's used um, and it's a higher onus, but the onus can drop down once the charge itself uh, is litigated in court itself. As a lawyer, what would you advise him to do in dealing with this case? Well, I mean, first of all, at Lucentum Sports, we manage uh, these situations on a regular basis in terms of the intersection of high-profile athletes and entertainers and, and criminal charges that arise uh, as a result of um, them engaging as citizens. Uh, the first thing I would tell Oscar and, and his team is uh, he needs to uh, get the best criminal defense counsel that he can uh, put together, sparing no expense in respect to his representation. Um, and uh, literally, he's fighting for his life and liberty. Uh, the one challenge that uh, is often the case is uh, for his defense team, they need to make sure that they are uh, proactively engaging the media because in cases like this, there's a great number of misinformation, speculation and innuendo that arises as the case goes forward. Uh, the, the defense team needs to make sure they're proactive in, in getting their message out if there's misinformation without compromising in any way, shape or form the defense put forth for him, again, because he's fighting for his liberty. And how do you predict his defense team will play this case? Well, you know, I, I've done these cases before. I've, I've, I've been involved with first-degree murder charges. And oftentimes what I would say is uh, even the morning of a trial, uh, in the middle of a trial, things change dramatically. And so uh, what's really important for uh, the defense team to think about is um, thinking about the jurors. Because at the end of the day, the juror members are the ones that will make a decision in terms of whether he's guilty of the offense uh, and in what particular accounts he's convicted of. And so I, I would focus, if I'm uh, uh, looking at their perspective, on making sure they get the information, they keep the information um, as active as possible, uh, and keep things a bit close without making sure they don't compromise um, the information that's going uh, and in the media. But uh, things change dramatically in a trial. And so uh, us outside will have no idea of the information that's being given to them um, but a trial evolves and changes dramatically and, uh, and I suspect my opinion is that uh, what we have today and what we have on the, the eve of trial will be dramatically different. How believable is the defense that uh, Pistorius thought Steenkamp was a burglar? We do know she was shot in the bathroom with the door closed. So how believable is that? Well, it'll be a challenge, uh, no doubt. There'll be an enormous challenge because for uh, the information we have today that four shots were fired. And uh, again, with a, a premeditated charge of murder, it requires that the Crown Attorney or the state prove that there was an intent to kill. And so that certainly is a challenge, but what I would say, and having done these before, many pieces of information uh, will come to light uh, that may benefit the defense or may harm. At this point, it's certainly a challenge to overcome that. But more importantly for Oscar, um, it's the public opinion, the court of public opinion, that will really uh, be the most detrimental to him. So regardless of what he is, whether he's found guilty or innocent, uh, certainly that is what he should be thinking about today. But on the long term, in the court of public opinion, um, many people um, will regard him as the person that, uh, that, tr that killed his girlfriend. Right. We were just looking at some uh, shots of her in her latest reality um, film that she did. And obviously, you know, people hearing some of the clips that she gave, such a sweet girl. She comes off as a very sweet, uh, beautiful, lovely girl. And of course, could that play into it as well? I mean, people are just falling in love with this girl by, you know, looking at uh, some of the things that she did and says. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I just, I can't help but think that people want to say, you know, who would want to hurt this girl and then want to lay the blame on him. 
Well, well, Anna, what I would say is, again, if I'm his counsel, um, I would caution people to not fall victim to the same narrative that takes us to where we are today, which is to build people up and, and watch them fall. And so uh, while it is regrettable, and, and one of the uh, full marks should go to Nike as one of uh, Oscar's key sponsors, their message was timely, it was pithy, uh, their message came out saying, one, uh, they send their utmost remorse to the family, and secondly, they refused to comment uh, while the investigation was going on. Um, things will come out on it, and uh, it is a tragic situation regardless of how it plays itself out in the final chapters. But I would, uh, as his counsel, and as members of a society that uh, have a judicial system where we assume that there is innocence uh, until proven otherwise, we should suspend judgment and we should wait for the information to come out. Um, we're, we're already hearing information. So, for instance, there are reports that have come out through the New York Times that Oscar was a gun enthusiast. Uh, he had a, a, an adrenaline type of, adrenaline rush type of personality. And, and that, too, will be information that members of the jury may or may not hear. And it will color uh, the issue of the facts as they played themselves out. And whether it is believable that someone who was a gun enthusiast, who had uh, rifles in his home, whether that was an appropriate reaction. And I must say as well, within the Canadian context, South Africa is a very different place. It's an emerging uh, country from uh, many, years, many years of change, and the behavior of having gun ownership may be very different than it is here in Canada. And so once all the facts play themselves out, uh, what's most important is uh, a fair trial for him, and it's going to be a great challenge for that South African judicial system to manage a case like this in the public world. Right. We also heard information that some neighbors heard arguments coming from their, their home. And that could also lead people to believe that maybe there was an argument and something happened. Well, certainly, uh, the information as it comes forth, and in a trial, when you're in the middle of the trial, those are key pieces of information that can assist the Crown Attorney or the prosecution in getting over that threshold of the, the intent part. So if those reports are, are true, uh, the Crown will evidence pieces of information of previous occurrences that involved, especially if they're of a dom domestic nature, um, and eyewitness accounts, witnesses that heard, and all of these things, uh, if I'm prosecuting the case, uh, would be uh, bits and pieces that the prosecution would use to get over that really tough hurdle. And it should be a tough hurdle because what we're talking about is a person's liberty, not just simply sponsorship and endorsement and the, the fall of a hero. We're talking about someone who is literally facing uh, their own liberty and their life, and that's at stake. And, uh, rightfully so, it's a, it's a uh, hurdle that uh, should be difficult to overcome. And he was just so well adored, being the first Paralympic to be at the uh, Paralympian to be at the Olympics. Um, what did these charges mean for his career? I heard that one billboard was already taken down. Um, what else could be in store for him? Well, I think we should draw the line. I mean, whether or not he is, uh, and again, he's presumed innocent, but if he is found guilty, then obviously the consequence is that he's either going to spend the rest of his life in jail or he, or he will lose his life. That's one. If he's found not guilty, what's for certain is that his um, status as a celebrity athlete, that's gone. And he will never be able to recover that part of his, uh, the allure and the heroic following that caused him to win the world over at the Olympic Games in London. And so that will be uh, the legacy that, that follows him uh, going forward. Um, and how he manages it with his sponsors, um, uh, one of the things that uh, we've come to realize is that there was an ad campaign that Nike was running in which uh, he used the words, uh, I am the gun or the bullet in the chamber. And Nike, rightfully so, they pulled that ad and they thought that it was mm -hmm. inappropriate based on the context. Uh, other sponsors uh, may do similar things, but Nike is the best at what they do. And oftentimes they will hold on to the athletes, suspend judgment, and wait for the entire process to play itself out, and then decide whether or not uh, they want to continue that relationship. But uh, in terms of his role as a celebrity athlete, there's no way he'll be able to recover that. So what challenges will he face, even, even if he's not convicted? Well, if he's not convicted, uh, what I would say is, um, if he's not convicted of the offense, there will be people who will judge him in the court of public opinion. And they will say that uh, you know, he will be our, this generation, so uh, the younger generations that followed him and admired him, uh, the equivalent of O.J. Simpson, meaning that he was found guilty at the criminal trial, but there are people who still feel as though, again, it appears at this point there's no doubt that he pulled uh, the trigger of the gun that, that led to the death of his girlfriend. The issue is intent. 
and there are defenses that would be raised by his team, but again, in the, the world of public opinion, uh, sponsors pay for an image, and at this point, that image um, has been tarnished. Sponsors invest in human capital, and there is no way that uh, the reputation that he had before uh, would ever change. And so, with that said, I think that that's the line we want to draw between Oscar Pistorius as an individual, Oscar Pistorius as a hero, and a, a celebrity athlete. Uh, the celebrity athlete aspect, regardless of what happened, uh, there won't be many sponsors that will stand by him. The only way it can be overcome is if uh, the, the state withdraws the charges unilaterally, and it's adjudicated that it was simply an accident, and uh, there's no plea deal of any kind that struck. That's the only thing that would really give him a platform to begin to rebuild uh, his professional career as well as his uh, career as an, uh, a celebrity endorser. Leith, any final thoughts you want to leave us with, with well, this case? Uh, I think that uh, it's a reminder to us all. Um, uh, at Lucentum, we, we deal with these cases all the time, and oftentimes we have young athletes, and one of the first things we do with those athletes is we go through crisis management for them explain to them how to deal with social media, how to interact with other people, because really they are victims. Uh, they are, sorry, they are, they are targets to people who, who would seek to victimize people who are of high status. It's a commentary on the way in the, the society that we have today. Um, and we build athletes up and entertainers up, but there is no moral requirement for these young people who are, are modern day gladiators. They don't have that moral requirement and sometimes uh, we see the other side of it. What Oscar represented uh, is an ideal about equity, about access, about a young man who overcame so many odds. And that story rings so true for many people around the world. And the, the sad part would be if we took Oscar's situation and uh, we, we, we went too far. Because what he represented should still live on and should still be part of the Olympic movement as it stands to uplift young people, uh, boys and girls, so that we can have a society that has uh, those principles of fairness and equality and and if Oscar is found not guilty, and uh, it should not blemish that overall um, goal of using sport as a vehicle for social change. Thanks, Leith. Really Thanks, appreciate Anna. it. Thanks for having me.